Hi, welcome to Tom's Tool Room. Today I'm going to make a miniature cutter, a uh, fly cutter, for my friend Greg Porter of Greg's Garage. I'm hoping that he'll be able to use it on his CNC machine. So what I'm doing is, uh, first, is I'm making a fixture uh, which I found a piece of aluminum and it is uh, one by one by two inches long and I am squaring it up uh, and I'm holding it one inch on all sides there and uh, and I'm trying to make it as square as I possibly can and I'm going to use this to hold the uh, the cutter to machine it so I measure directly or I'm going directly into the middle of the piece and I'm going to drill a hole clear through it and then I'm going to ream the hole and after that I'll be able to uh, flip it on its side there and uh, drill and tap for a uh, set screw. I'll use the set screw to hold hold the piece into the fixture and I'll be able to turn the piece any way I want uh, because the hole is in the middle I know uh, if I pick up the sides of the fixture uh, exactly where my center line will be of the cutter so after this uh, we'll deburr it with the reamer and uh, check it with a quarter inch dowel and we've got a nice fit and uh, we're off to the lathe to make our uh, to make the body of the cutter. So I'm going to uh, use three quarter inch O1 tool steel here, and uh, we're going to machine it down to a quarter inch so it'll fit the hole in the fixture. Give it a check here. And I need to just shave just a hair more off of it, I believe. Yeah, it's a little tight. Pull that back off there. Ah, oh, finally. Take a file. Just knock a little bit more off of it. And there, that's a nice fit. Quick little radius into the shoulder there for strength. And I'll knock the corners off of both diameters there. Deeper it. And then back to the mill. Now I need a little flat uh, so my set screw will have something to set against uh, to give it the maximum holding power. So I'm taking a quarter inch four flute end mill here, about 300 RPM. And I'm just going to put uh, enough flat uh, to uh, cover the footprint of my 1032 set screw I'm going to use. And here's a quick look at it. Now it's time to uh, put the uh, put the cutter into the fixture. I got a great fit on the diameter. There's no slop at all.
and I'll just wiggle it around and get the set screw to seat squarely against the flat, tighten it up, and we're ready to go. We'll chuck it up in the vise here on a 15 degree angle. And we'll mill our face. Touch up here. Same quarter inch for fluid end mill, 300 RPM. And we'll mill this flat. Uh, I believe I wanted to get it to 3 8 of an inch off the fixture there. So here's our finished cut. And now we'll be ready for the slot. Okay, for the slot, I'll uh, pick up the back of my fixture. I know where my hole is. It's in the center of the fixture. So once I've picked up, I'll move to the center of the fixture, which will be the center line of the cutter. I've switched to a 3 16th four flute end mill. See, I'm touching up here. 350 RPM and I milled the slot in about 200 thousandths deep and here I'm finishing the sides of the slot uh, I'm going to use a 3 16 high speed blank for a cutter so I wanted to give it about 10 thousandths clearance and uh, so I went 5 thousandths each way and it worked out perfect. Now I need to mill a step for my set screws to hold the high speed blank. And that'll be the same depth as the slot. Here I'm touching up. And here I'm taking the finish passes on it. And here's a look at it, and we're ready now to put the tap holes into the side of it. I scribed a line here where I want the set screws to be. And then again, by using my fixture, I picked up the back side, and then I'll be moving to the center of it. Which, by the way, the hole is 500 thousandths off all, all four sides for the fixture. Now, using a wiggler, I move 250 thousandths off center, and then I'll line up my x axis by eye with the wiggler to the line, and I'll draw them tap for a 632. little chamfer and then I'll run the tap in by hand with the spindle in neutral. 632 is uh, pretty small for tool steel. Very easy to break a tap at this point and ruin the part. Then we'll repeat the process with the wiggler.
do the second hole as you'll see I'll move it 250 thousandths off of center match my match my line on my x-axis drill and tap again Here I screwed up. Uh, the only screw up I have on it, uh, if you'll notice right there, I touched the side of the outer diameter with the uh, chamfer tool. Uh, completely my fault. So we have a witness mark. Now I'll make sure my holes are tapped clean through the, the little wall there. And now the uh, the machine work on the uh, cutter itself is uh, is finished. We'll get a look at it here, and uh, now we'll harden it. So now I hardened it. I used a MAPE gas torch. Um, I wasn't uh, very happy with it. It's the first time I've ever done it that way. Uh, usually I use an uh, oxyacetylene torch, and uh, I think uh, I think I got it a little too warm. It'll be okay. Uh, it didn't harden, but not as hard as I, as it could have been. Uh, we put a little draw on it anyway after the hardening process. Then back to the lathe and uh, for a little polishing. Then I went to the belt sander, took a 3 uh, high speed steel blank and uh, put a little grind on it there so we can test it on some, uh, on some wood and uh, see how she cuts. Here I'll assemble it. And then back to the mill for uh, a test rip on this wood here and uh, just beautiful and it even cuts the cuts the hell out of aluminum as well all right that'll do it for this project I want to thank everybody for watching and uh, if you like this kind of video uh, hit the subscribe button down there at the bottom and uh, thanks again